Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today, the service members of the United States European Command pay special tribute as we observe a change of command ceremony in which the reins of responsibility pass from General Todd D. Walters to General Christopher G. Cavoli. The presiding official for today's ceremony is the United States Secretary of Defense, the Honorable Lloyd J. Austin III. Also joining us today is the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark A. Milley. I would like to take a moment to recognize our distinguished guests. I ask that you hold your applause until everyone is introduced. Mrs. Charlene Walters, spouse of the outgoing combatant commander of United States European Command. Mrs. Christina Cavoli, spouse of the incoming combatant commander of United States European Command. Dr. Karen Donfried, Assistant Secretary of State for Bureau of European and Eurasian Affairs. Dr. Celeste Wallander, Assistant Secretary of Defense for International Security Affairs. Mr. Spencer Boyer, Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for European and NATO Policy. General Stephen Townsend, Combatant Commander, United States Africa Command, and his spouse, Mrs. Melissa Townsend. General Darrell A. Williams, Commander, United States Army, Europe, Africa. Admiral Stuart Munch, Commander, United States Naval Forces, Europe, Africa, and Commander, Allied Joint Forces Command, Naples. Dr. Frank Noper, Lord Mayor of Stuttgart, and his spouse, Frau Gudrun Weichselgardner Noper. Lastly, a special welcome to all general and flag officers, active and retired, members of the Senior Executive Service, civic leaders, commanders, directors, chiefs, and members of the United States European Command. Thank you for being here to share in this special occasion. The Joint Chiefs of Staff established the United States European Command on 1 August 1952 to exercise unified command over all United States air, ground, and naval forces in Europe and the Mediterranean. Since the September 11, 2001 terrorist attack, the European Command has played a vital role in the war on terrorism and has provided combat-ready forces for operations Iraqi Freedom, Enduring Freedom, Odyssey Dawn, and Unified Protector. The command directs theater security cooperation activities throughout Europe and is engaged in strategic theater transformation to prepare for future challenges. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party and the rendering of honors. A 19-gun salute will be conducted during the playing of Ruffles and Flourishes and Stars and Stripes in honor of the Secretary of Defense. Please remain standing for the presentation of colors the playing of the national anthems, and the invocation.
Thank you, United States European Command Color Guard and the United States Air Force Europe Band. At this time, Chaplain Barclay will deliver the invocation. Please join me in prayer. Dear God, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for the leadership of General Todd Walters during the past three years at U.S. European Command. Thank you for giving him the wisdom and help to bear the burdens and meet the demanding responsibilities of leading this combatant command in all its complexities. Thank you for having Charlene at his side through it all. We pray that their future is full of joy as they pursue new opportunities in retirement. Oh God, thank you for preparing General Christopher Cavoli to lead at this time. Endow him with exceptional wisdom necessary for this new role. Enable his efforts to unite with allies and partners. Bless his wife, Christina, as many will turn to her as well. Also, God, please help us to support General Cavoli to successfully sustain, forecast, and respond to the needs of our nation and our national leaders. In closing, God, empower us to uphold peace and liberty. And please bless all those who seek to do right or have need of divine intervention. This I pray in your holy name, O Lord. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Barclay. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. At this time, Staff Sergeant Victoria Coronado, Headquarters, United States European Command, will present a bouquet of flowers to Mrs. Walters as an expression of gratitude for her commitment and dedicated service to the United States European Command. And Petty Officer Second Class Antonio Maldonado, Headquarters, United States European Command, is presenting a bouquet of flowers to Mrs. Cavoli, signifying the trust and friendship that will develop as she becomes an integral member of the United States European Command. At this time, General Milley, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, will come forward to present Mrs. Walters with the Outstanding Public Service Award. Please remain seated during the award presentation. <laughs> the citation reads, the Outstanding Public Service Award is awarded to Mrs. Charlene Walters. Mrs. Charlene Walters distinguished herself by superior public service in recognition of extraordinary contributions to the service members, civilians, and families of the communities of the Supreme Headquarters Allied Powers Europe and the United States European Command from 4 May 2019 to 1 July 2022. Mrs. Walters worked diligently to ensure theater resources met the educational needs of all service members' children in Europe through her superior briefings and discussions throughout the European Command area of operations. Mrs. Walters has also been an advocate for those helping those in need. Working with the United States Spouses Group, she helped to organize, collect, and deliver needed items to charity and support agencies throughout the years. The distinctive accomplishments of Mrs. Walters are in keeping with the finest traditions of public service and reflect great credit upon herself, the Supreme Headquarters Allied Powers Europe, the United States European Command, and the Department of Defense. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, it is my pleasure to introduce the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark A. Milley. So, how's everybody doing? Oh, big day. 
Secretary Austin, thank you for being here. Uh, Todd, Charlene, Chris, and Christine, uh, this is your day. Uh, today's about you, but uh, more importantly, uh, it's about the soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, Coast Guardsmen, Space Guardians of U.S. European Command. 100,000, 100,000 troops deployed throughout Europe on Freedom's Frontier as we speak here today in this gym. That is what this ceremony is all about. So thank you all for coming and sharing a few minutes of your time uh, with us. I know there's many dignitaries here. Uh, there's many generals and, and friends of uh, the Cavolis and friends of the Walters, friends of UCOM. Uh, and I want to acknowledge all of you and say thank you for coming. Those soldiers, those troops that I mentioned, they're standing watch right now during one of the most pivotal and dangerous times in our lifetime. They are reassuring our allies. They are working with our partners to keep us safe. And they are supporting Ukraine as Ukraine fights to defend their nation and their sovereignty. UCOM is critical to the security of the United States, to Europe, and frankly, to the world. The strategic complexity of a region that in encompasses more than 50 countries and territories, along with a billion people speaking 200 different languages. That requires the very best of our leaders, a region that collectively generates $23 trillion in output. The importance of UCOM in this region transcends its borders and boundaries. The United States, and specifically UCOM, is part of a much larger team of teams that includes all the countries of NATO and many that are not part of NATO. And the strength of our allies and partnerships combined with the United States is extraordinary. And any adversary should take note. The countries of Europe combined, including the United States, have almost 3 million troops in uniform. 150 brigade combat teams, well over 100 fourth and fifth generation fighter squadrons, over 200 warships, not including the United States Navy. The U.S. and our European allies and partners represent one of the most incredible, powerful military alliances in human history, and without question, it's been the most successful. And UCOM plays a critical component to that. Just as rope is made stronger by the weaving of many strands, UCOM is one of those strands that makes NATO and Europe stronger by banding together with our partners and allies. It is this strength that Todd Walters has developed, not just over the last three years as the UCOM commander, but over his 40-year career. Todd started his career right here in Germany when it was still divided, when there was a West Germany and an East Germany, when there was a Berlin Wall, a wall that not only divided a nation, and not only divided Europe, but divided the world. Todd has spent his career serving others so that we are not divided, so that we are united. And I can say with certainty that Todd Walters is here because of his character. To be sure, he possesses competence and commitment and courage, but he is here because of his character. Wherever Todd was sent over the last 40 years, he did his duty with unwavering commitment and integrity to the nation and to the idea that is America, the Constitution of the United States. He's commanded at every single level, from pilot to now combatant commander. And he's done it in the most challenging and dynamic environments in modern history that we've seen over the last four decades. He was at Pittsburgh Air Base when the wall came down, and he was in the Pentagon on 911. He commanded the first ops group at Langley during the invasion of Iraq. He's been personally present at some of the most critical junctures in this region and that our nation has ever faced. It's not an exaggeration that Todd Walters is the UCOM commander and as the Supreme Allied Commander of Europe, 
has faced more challenges than any sack year since Eisenhower. Todd and Charlene have led through multiple combat deployments, serving families, comforting the wounded, and fighting for our nation. And it's with this depth of experience that Todd came home to UCOM, having started here so many years ago as a young fighter pilot. This nation has counted on Todd's leadership many times over the last three years, and he has led UCOM masterfully. The ending of our nation's longest war, the largest military air evacuation ever conducted in history, would not have been possible without the incredible teamwork here in UCOM. Today, there are over 124,000 Afghans who have the opportunity to live in freedom because of the selfless sacrifice of our troops here on this continent and the leadership and organizational capability of General Todd Walters. A mere six months later, UCOM tested again, this time with the illegal invasion of Ukraine by Russia. And UCOM once again defended the free world against those who seek to instill fear and tyranny on others. Todd Walters has masterfully led during an incredibly difficult time, a time for the first time in NATO history that has seen a prolonged deployment of NATO battle groups to protect the eastern flank. Through all of the deployments and the commands and challenges over four decades, Todd and Charlene, Todd has had Charlene by his side. And Charlene, we all owe you a great debt. And I want to personally thank you on behalf of everyone that's in this room, but really on behalf of the tens of thousands of troops that you have comforted over the years and taken care of their families. The cost of war is borne by families, and our families often go unseen. Their worries, their sleepless nights, their anxiety, it never ends for them. And we couldn't do our job without the love of our spouses, without their advice and their sacrifice and the sacrifice of our children. We in uniform volunteered for this military, but our families, and especially our children, did not. They were literally born into it. Charlene raised two wonderful kids who unfortunately couldn't be with us here today because in the true tradition of service in the Walters family, their son Tommy is on duty flying HC-130s as a pilot in Georgia, and their daughter Sandra is married to a young Army officer who's about to take command of a battalion, and she is now moving to Fort Hood, Texas. The service tradition in the Walters is now being carried on by the next generation, just as Todd did from his father, Brigadier General Walters, who has passed on, but I am certain that he's looking down right now and so incredibly proud of you, Todd. Todd, you served our nation at the very pinnacle as a combatant commander, and you and Charlene have so very much to be proud of. You've served with distinction, you've seen the crucible of combat, and you have served extraordinarily well. Forty years of selfless service in defense of our Constitution in peace and in war. Well done, my friend. You are an incredible servant leader for all of us to emulate. But in the great tradition of our military, the mission never ends. The watch continues. Our eastern flank is going to remain in good hands. All of Europe will remain in good hands. As we, the United States, are putting the right leader at the right time to take command of UCOM. Chris Cavoli is that leader. He has the unique blend of character, attributes, experiences, and knowledge to lead UCOM in this unprecedented time. This is the most seamless transition I've ever seen for an incoming commander anywhere. Chris knows Europe better than any living officer in uniform today. Chris is literally purpose-built to lead UCOM and to become SACUR on Monday. There is no one more qualified. Like Todd, Chris Cavoli also comes from a family of service. His father served in the Army for 32 years, retiring as a colonel. In fact, at one point, Chris, both of his brothers and his father, were all on active duty at the same time. In fact, Chris's mom, who is watching right now, 
from the Chateau in Belgium, but more importantly, Chris's mom is from the Holy Land of Boston. <laughs> so she and Ivo, or Evo, Chris's dad, she, Reader, and Evo are right now watching this live streamed, and we want to welcome them to this ceremony. As many of you know, Chris is an ROTC graduate from the number one university in America, Princeton University. And he started as an infantryman in the 173rd Northern Italy, and has a vast amount of experience in combat on staff and in this theater. He grew up in Europe, and he's lived all over the continent, and he's fluent in French, Russian, and Italian. He reads Spanish and Portuguese, and he can get by and understand Polish and Ukrainian, which enables him to communicate directly with about half the population of Europe. He has had multiple tours here on the continent and is commanded in the Army at every level to include multiple combat assignments in Afghanistan. He served in Bosnia. He's been tested in the unforgiving environment of ground combat as a battalion commander in Konar in the 10th Mountain Division in Afghanistan. He commanded a brigade combat team in the 1st Armored Division. He commanded the 7th Army Training Group here in Europe. He was a DCG of the 82nd Airborne Division, and he commanded the 25th Infantry Division. And of course, he's coming from command of U.S. Army Europe and U.S. Army Africa. He's also served as a DCG, the Deputy Commanding General in the Italian Division in RC west of Afghanistan, and he was director of the Russia desk on the Joint Staff, in addition to earning a master's at Yale, a second-rated school, <laughs> in Russian studies. He's tough, he's combat seasoned, he's smart, and has a deep understanding of Europe and Russia. And he's the first officer commissioned from the class of 1988 to make four stars. Chris Cavoli is the right officer in the right job at the right time. And to the men and women of UCOM, what you do every day to keep our nation and this region safe matters. We are at that pivotal moment, that transition period in history, and UCOM makes it matter. You are upholding the rules-based international order. You are keeping NATO solid and together. You are protecting America's vital interests, and importantly, you are preventing great power war. Your skills and your readiness matter more now than they ever have. Thank you. Thank you for doing what you're doing to every troop that's out there. And I know that you will wrap your arms around Chris and Christina Cavoli. Thank you for your service, your leadership, and all that you have done for the nation. And may God bless America. At this time, General Milley will present General Walters with the Defense Distinguished Service Medal. Please stand for the presentation of the award. Attention to orders. The Defense Distinguished Service Medal is awarded to General Todd D. Walters. General Todd D. Walters, United States Air Force, distinguished himself by exceptionally meritorious service in a duty of great responsibility as Commander, United States European Command, and as Supreme Allied Commander, Europe, from May 2019 to July 2022. During this period, General Walters oversaw the execution of Operation Axiom Traveler, the operations to enhance security at the United States Embassy in Lebanon, and the balancing of competing demands to assure a North Atlantic Treaty Organization ally with the United States defeat Islamic State in Iraq, Syria, and Syria campaign in Turkey and Northern Syria. He drove a focus on creating an efficient and capable warfighting headquarters at both European Command and Supreme Headquarters Allied Powers Europe. General Walters oversaw the seamless transfer of combatant command authority of Israel from United States European Command to United States Central Command and ensured closer integration with the North Atlantic Treaty Organization and Supreme Headquarters Allied Powers Europe. 
The distinctive accomplishments of General Walters culminated a long and distinguished career in the service of his country and reflect great credit upon himself, the United States Air Force, and the Department of Defense. On three, sit down. Okay, it's now my distinct honor and privilege to introduce a man I've known uh, for over a quarter of a century, our 28th Secretary of Defense. And let me just take a moment. He really needs no introduction, but uh, this is a guy that everyone in this room knows. Uh, he's commanded at all levels uh, in the Army, and and the Joint Force. Of course, he commanded a brigade in the 82nd, and uh, he, uh, the Mighty Panther Brigade, for those of you who remember. Uh, he commanded the 10th Mountain Division. Many of us were subordinate to him in that great outfit. Uh, he commanded 18th Airborne Corps CD, so uh, you are following in some great footsteps. And of course, he was served on the Joint Staff many times, and many of us here served under him there. And he commanded uh, both in Iraq uh, and ultimately Central Command. This is a guy who I know personally is incredibly courageous. He's a recipient of the Silver Star. I've seen him in contact. I've seen him when the bullets are flying. I've seen him comfort the wounded. I've seen him take care of the families of our fallen. This is a man who all of us deeply respect, and I would like to now welcome the 28th Secretary of Defense, Lloyd J. Austin III. Well, thank you, General Milley, for that overly generous introduction. I really appreciate it. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I think most people are asleep right now. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. All right. all right. Well, thank you all for your support of this great command. Mrs. Walters, Mrs. Cavoli, it's great to be here with you. And thank you both for all that you do. And let me give a warm welcome to all the proud members of the Walters and Cavoli families who are joining us online. It's great to have you with us virtually. And it is great to be with the exceptional men and women of the United States European Command. I'm especially glad to be here with you as you're celebrating a major milestone. This year marks UCOM's 70th anniversary. And over the past seven decades, this command has helped defend our security, our values, and the rules-based international order that protects us all. Now, you saw that mission reinforced, reinforced yet again at the landmark NATO summit this week and in the unity and resolve that President Biden has helped to forge. And ladies and gentlemen, we're gathered here at a hinge in history. Russia's premeditated malice and baseless aggression against Ukraine poses the greatest threat to Europe European security since the end of World War II. And Putin's war of choice threatens more than just the sovereignty of Ukraine. It is an assault on transatlantic peace and security. It is a reminder that tyrants believe that their imperial appetites matter more than the rights of their peaceful neighbors. And 
It's a rallying cry for people of goodwill from every part of the planet who have stood together to defend freedom, democracy, and human rights from autocrats who see free systems of self-government as relics of the past. So in this hour of danger, I'm incredibly proud of the way that this command has stepped up. You've transformed conference rooms here at UCOM into 24-hour operation centers to rush security assistance to Ukraine. You're harmonizing your efforts with NATO as the Alliance sends thousands of additional troops to its eastern flank. And together with our allies and partners around the world, you're meeting Russian aggression with unity, with spine, and with steel. So let's have a round of applause for the incredible work that UCOM is doing. You know, as I was sitting up there in the chair a couple of minutes ago, I looked around the room and I was just amazed at the number of heroes, my personal heroes, that I see in the audience here. Uh, men and women that I've served with over time who have done remarkable things on behalf of their country. And I've stood in your ranks before and I'm proud to be able to be in the same room with you yet again. It is truly humbling for me. You know, this team's historic achievements, especially over the past few months, are a testament to the leadership of your commander, General Todd Walters. And as you heard the chairman say a few moments ago, General Walters joined the Air Force just like his dad did. And like his father, Todd attended the elite, Wep the elite fighter weapons school at Nellis Air Force Base. But Todd didn't just graduate from that school. They called him back to be an instructor. Now, the students at weapons school learned to live by a three-word motto, humble, approachable, and credible. And throughout his career, he's embodied those three qualities. First, there's no doubt in anyone's mind in this room or across the entire command that General Walters is humble. Now, humility doesn't necessarily go along with someone whose full title includes Supreme Allied Commander. But he is indeed humble. Todd, in your time as SACUR, you've built trust with our allies and partners through cooperation and respect. You've led with teamwork and not arrogance. And that's produced historic results. Second, General Walters is approachable. Everyone here knows his calm demeanor and his steady focus. You know, he's got a way of inspiring confidence in everyone, from junior officers to senior military leaders to the President of the United States. And Todd is a kind of a guy who's never met a stranger. No matter where he served, the surrounding community has gained lifelong friends in General Walters and his family. Case in point, Todd left his post as commander of Tyndall Air Force Base back in 2008. But for years afterward, the people in and around that community would ask about the man with the call sign Magoo. Some of you young guys probably didn't know that that was his call sign, but that's his call sign, Magoo. And third, General Walters is credible. He just gets the job done. And he gets it done over and over again. You know, the Air Force has counted on him as wing commander three times over. The men and women of UCOM counted on him to lead them through the COVID pandemic and to rush life-saving vaccines and medical supplies to our allies and partners. 
And the United States and our allies counted on him to wind down NATO's mission in Afghanistan. And other U.S. commands and interagency partners counted on him to evacuate more than 42,000 Afghan civilians to temporary facilities in Europe. Our allies counted on him to strengthen our readiness and deepen our interoperability. And we have all counted on him for wisdom and vision throughout this historic crisis caused by Russia's invasion of Ukraine. As you heard the chairman say earlier, no sack Euro has faced a challenge of this magnitude in recent memory. But General Walters, you have always come through, always. And at your last NATO defense ministerial, every minister of defense in the room congratulated you on your tenure, with no exceptions. And that's the type of leader that you are. Now, on behalf of the entire department, I want to thank your wife, who has always come through for you. And you and I had, uh, you and I both had the good sense to marry women named Charlene. So my wife's named Charlene as well. And Todd, I think we can probably start a club, you and I. We could call it something like men who have been trained by Charlene's <laughs> or something like that. But Charlene has supported you through 20 moves. And as you flew combat missions in Iraq and Afghanistan, she was there. And as you logged more than 5,000 5, hours in the sky, she was there. And along the way, you have both raised two wonderful children, your daughter Sandra and your son Tommy. And you described Sandra as a 21st century military spouse, and while her husband James serves in the Army. And Tommy, as you heard earlier, is continuing the Walters legacy in the Air Force. So let me echo the Chairman's gratitude for this outstanding military family. Let's give this family one round of applause. <laughs> Humble, approachable, and credible. General Walters, you have lived and led by that creed. Thank you, Todd, for everything that you've done for our world and for our country and for the United States Air Force. In your well-earned retirement, may you have blue skies with the wind at your back. And we wish you all the best. Now, General Walters is a tough act to follow. But we've got just the right leader in General Chris Cavoli. And Chris, you're going to keep up the momentum. There's no question in my mind. Your father immigrated to the United States from Italy and became a U.S. Army officer. He was assigned to Germany, where you entered the story. And when you became an Army officer, you were also following proudly in your father's footsteps. And growing up, you followed your dad to his many assignments around Europe. You went to elementary school and high school in Italy. You speak French, Russian, and Italian. You've had multiple assignments in this AOR from Bo Bosnia to Germany. You've even served, as you heard the chairman say earlier, on the Russia desk for the Joint Staff. So I know that for you, being in Europe feels a lot like being home. But the person who really makes a new place feel like home for your family is your wife, Christina. So Christina, let me thank you for joining Chris on this incredible journey. journey. And I know that you're both incredibly proud of your sons, Alec and Nick. Alex works at a clean energy startup, and Nick is at UC Santa Barbara studying physics. And we're grateful to the entire Cavoli family. 
And we thank you in advance for all the support that you'll offer Chris in the years ahead. General Cavoli, you are the soldier state statesman who this command needs at this moment of challenge. You're a powerful intellect, a creative thinker, and a fierce warrior. And actually, I've seen that firsthand. When I was commanding general of the 10th Mountain Division, Chris was one of my battalion commanders. And he did an absolutely outstanding job. And he's gone on to command at every level. And one of those assignments was deputy commander of NATO's regional, West, uh, NATO's regional command west in Herat, Afghanistan. And there he worked with forces from Croatia, Italy, Lithuania, and Spain. So he not only saw the grit of US troops in combat, he also witnessed the power of NATO allies serving shoulder to shoulder. In his most recent assignment, General Cavoli led all of the Army's efforts from the northern tip of Norway down to the southern tip of South Africa, covering more than 100 countries in between. And he led with a sure hand during operations, Operation Allies Welcome. He seamlessly consolidated U.S. Army Africa and U.S. Army Europe into one headquarters. And he oversaw the reactivation of Fifth Corps. And in recent weeks, he swiftly repositioned more ground forces on the eastern flank to deter Russian aggression against NATO, including the deployment of a full armored brigade combat team in a little over a week. So General Cavoli is exceptionally well prepared to further strengthen NATO's posture on the eastern flank and to help forge a truly 21st century security architecture for Europe. Because NATO, Chris, as you've said, cannot be a one-problem alliance. And as you've also noted, NATO must stay vigilant across 360 degrees from aggressive behavior from the PRC to terrorism to climate change. So Chris, you are the right leader with the right experience at the right time. And I have every confidence that you'll do well. Ladies and gentlemen, back in 1952, the very first SACUR was stepping down. And in his farewell to NATO, General Dwight Eisenhower said that he and the Alliance leaders had shared, quote, the same passionate hope of serving free humanity and of making it secure. We still share that hope. We still keep that flame burning. And I believe that future generations will, will look back on how we all serve the cause of freedom at this pivotal moment. They'll take inspiration from the, the resilience and the valor of the Ukrainian people. They'll take heart from the way that nations of goodwill rallied against Putin's aggression. And they'll remember the way that we moved to, to defend every member of NATO. And they'll recall the way that we renewed the institutions and alliances that deepen our shared security. And they will draw strength from that same passionate hope of serving free humanity and our struggle to make it secure. Thanks to all of you. Men and women of UCOM, may God bless you and keep you safe, and may God continue to bless the United States of America. Thank you very much. Thank you, Secretary Austin. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to introduce the commander of United States European Command, General Todd D. Walters. Secretary Austin, General Milley, my dear brother Steve Townsend and his wife Melissa, our esteemed AFRICOM commander, 
fellow flag officers and commanders, senior civilian leadership that represents the great nation of Germany, to all the wonderful members of Team Cavoli that are with us virtually, and to Christina and Chris on stage, and certainly the boys, to my adorable bride, Charlene, and most importantly, to all the warriors that represent all the entities within UCOM. It's an honor to be in your company at this venue at this time. As most of us know, the old gymnasium at a post or a base means so much to so many of us. And I suspect as a young kid in West Germany, I spent a little bit of time on this basketball arena, as did Chris Cavoli during his day. Not basketball, though. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some indoor soccer. In these old gyms, this uber clean old gym is a perfect venue uh, for Charlene and I to have the opportunity to say thanks and bid welcome to the Cavolis. Before I go any further, I just want to make sure that I take this time to, to thank all of the, of the members of Team UCOM for setting this up and its typical U.S. Department of Defense standard. It's perfect. The floor, the chairs, the honor guard, the band, the flags. It just takes a lot of work and a lot of orchestration. And the only way that it can be effectively executed is with human beings that care so much about doing so well. So we thank you. Since I'm about to, you betcha. Since I'm about to retire, I'm going to do something just a little bit edgy, and I'm going to say thanks to a couple of friends of mine that happen to be my bosses, so I really can't be accused of buttering up to the bosses when I make this statement. Uh, first, let me start with Secretary Austin. In my lifetime, I have never seen a more powerful combination of discipline and decency. He lives it. He's a follow me leader. He always has been. And he's just one of those rare human beings that when you come close to him, you have no choice but to stand up a little bit straighter and make sure that your words come out just a little bit clearer. But most importantly, like all great leaders, he has a heart as big as Hammer and Hank Aaron's smile that we all know so well. And, sir, I, I don't know if in my children's lifetime or my grandkids' lifetime we will ever come across a human being quite like you. But as you well know from your time, we all need coaching. And as a young lieutenant general on the Joint Staff serving as the J3, I spent every single waking moment that I could watching General Austin command CENTCOM. And he did it better than anybody else. And the entire time that he did it, he coached. Everybody within five bazillion square miles of his existence just got a little bit better. And so many of us are sitting here today. From Mike Howard to Rob Abernathy to C.D. Donahue to Darrell Williams to Steve Townsend and to many, many others. Sir, you inspire like nobody else, and I'm absolutely positively confident in saying that you are a legendary 21st century security figure uh, who will be written about for centuries and centuries, and I just want to offer you a round of applause from all of us at UConn for what you do. And then there's another one of my bosses on the stage. Let me start with the facts. Mark Milley is the vortex of chaos. <laughs> we all know it. Bless his heart, wherever he goes, it just follows. When he took over as the chairman, none of us were surprised 
that KJU decided to be ugly. Iran got nasty. Afghanistan got hot. Russia got crazy. And China just couldn't back off. Uh, he, he is the most relentless pursuer of peace who I have ever met. And God love him for his thoroughness and for all of us who have had the privilege to serve under his command. He does exactly what our nation wants. Every single fiber of his being and his body is shaped by his dad. And his dad taught him the ugliness of war in Iwo Jima. And Mark Milley wakes up every morning with about two hours of sleep at 0400, and he gets after the mission like nobody else. And his goal is to do everything within our being to keep us out of war and keep the peace. And that is the most commendable thing that you can say about any uniform military. And we just happen to be lucky enough in the United States of America to have our senior most uniform military member with that drive and that vision. Sir, I thank you for everything that you've done and you'll continue to do for the next 14 and a half months. And it's always been an honor to serve at your side. Thank you, sir. Let me take this opportunity to welcome Team Cavoli. Uh, I haven't had the opportunity to spend enough time with the boys. I get to see them occasionally, but Christina and Chris, we are looking oh so forward to watching Team Cavoli excel here at UConn and subsequently as SAC year. It's, it's just the, the best experience of a lifetime to be able to flip the baton to somebody who you serve with, who you care for, who you would die for, and who you have had the opportunity to live for. And Chris and I have been side by side for four and a half years when he took over his, his U.S. Army Europe. And it was obvious the first time that I ever met him that this cat was just a little bit different than the rest of us. And when you talk about quicker, smarter, faster and more capable in the next generation of commander. That, that is exactly what USUCOM is getting with Chris, and they get the gold medal package with Christina. Chris, you have uh, excelled at every level, as the secretary and the chairman have pointed out. What I've been able to see firsthand joining at your side is the internal courage that you've always had in delivering your best military advice which is exactly what General Milley wants and exactly what Secretary Austin wants. And you will give us that great advice regardless of the circumstances. I just want to pass to you on behalf of a grateful Walters family how proud we are of you and Christina for what you've done and what you'll continue to do. And we wish you the best of luck as you take USUCOM and certainly SAC year to great heights. Welcome aboard, you guys. Two more thank yous and I'll get out of your hair. Uh, th this one goes to my adorable bride, Charlene. 42 years ago, we laid eyes on each other and I was hooked. And, and it seems like 42 years has just spun by. Uh, and, and babe, it seems like it's been about three days. Uh, what I've always adored about you the most is you, you wake up every morning and, and you care far more about our dependents, our spouses, their families and their well-being than anything else. And, and for all these 40 years of marriage, you, you've done nothing but volunteer your blood, sweat, and tears to do everything within your power to make sure that everybody uh, that was a member of a squadron or a group or a wing or a numbered air force or a task force or a match com and then stepping down in brigades and in battalions that nobody was left behind and nobody was left alone. You, you always look for those 
few folks that we all see that may not be fitting in the way that they would prefer, and you always reached out. Uh, I love you, and I thank you for what you've done for the military families, and I look forward to the next chapter. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the United States European Command change of command. Attention to orders. By order of the President of the United States, General Todd D. Walters relinquishes command of the United States European Command, and General Christopher G. Cavoli assumes command, effective 1 July 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce the Commander, United States European Command, General Christopher G. Cavoli. Thank you. Uh, Secretary Austin, Chairman Milley, General Mrs. Walters, General Mrs. Townsend, Sergeant Major and Mrs. Abernathy, uh, civilian officials, general officers, command sergeants, major, uh, our allied colleagues across the alliance, and um, to our German colleagues in government. Thank you all for being here. You, uh, you really do us honor by your presence. I, I have nothing to say but thank yous. Uh, first, uh, to the president, to the secretary, and to the chairman, thank you gentlemen, for the confidence and the trust that you're placing in me. I understand just how heavy the responsibilities are at this time in Europe. I will not let you down. I thank uh, General Walters and Charlene. Sir, thank you for your leadership for these past years. When you were the USAFE commander for your friendship, I will never forget my second day in command of US Army Europe. You took it upon yourself to get onto my calendar and drove from Ramstein to Wiesbaden to sit down and establish a relationship. Um, that was a lesson for me. No matter how old we are, we can always learn another lesson from a greater leader. And you taught that to me that day and every day. The grace and the dignity and the effectiveness with which you led UCOM and our alliance are an inspiration to me. And I look forward to building on the foundation that you have laid. Uh, thank you to our colleagues across the alliance and across Europe. Our work is meaningful only because of you, and our collective efforts are what will secure the peace that General Walter so eloquently spoke of. Thank you to our host nation officials across Europe who take care of our families, who take care of our service men and women, and who take care of us every day. I thank my family, Christina. I thank you, the boys, Alex and Nick. Yes, Nick is at UC Santa Barbara studying physics, but every time I FaceTime with him, his hair is wet, so I assume he's doing some surfing as well. Um, most of all, um, thanks to comrades in arms every place, um, those we have shed and sacrificed blood, sweat, and tears with. I see you out there, Jay Kopcha. Thank you for being here today. Uh, thank you for representing the men and women we've always served with and who have done so much for their countries to include lay down their lives when asked. Um, thank you to the men and women of US UCOM. Thank you for this wonderful reception today. Thank you for being the teammates that you were during my time as the US Army Europe and Africa Commander. And thank you very much for the sacrifices you make for the country every day. Your accomplishments are legion 
and they are famous throughout our country. It has been my privilege to stand in your ranks for the last four and a half years, and I'm thankful that I will have the opportunity to continue to do so. And together, we will move into a bright future. So God bless you all. God bless the NATO Alliance. God bless the United States of America. Thank you, General Cavoli. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the playing of the Joint Service Medley and the departure of the official party. Please remain standing for the departure of the official party.
Ladies and gentlemen, while they take the photo, we ask everyone else please stay in place. Uh, this does conclude today's ceremony. However, we ask you to remain momentarily uh, and wait until the motorcades of the official party have departed.